Yes, sir. It's the Going Back Show with Money B. Money B. In the building. And of course, it's my birthday. So I got my birthday cookie and my birthday brew. And uh, just just to let the audience know, that's why I had to start out with a little bit of raw fusion. This yeah, for your birthday, bruh. You courtesy know, it of DJ Always. wasn't in the, in the script, but I had to throw it in there for you, man, because we have some jams back there. You know, take care of your guy, man. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, we have a, a, a great show today. Um, our guest is West Coast legend, you could you could say. Yeah, And probably an, an unsung hero of sorts. Yes. My man, Arabian Prince. Um, Arabian Prince was an original member of NWA, but he also had a, a, a fairly decent solo career. So, we definitely going to highlight my guy, A-Rap. Arabian Prince and kind of get all into it and see what it do. Are we gonna have a surprise or is that gonna be another week? What? what? Oh, oh boy out there. Oh, homeboy? Yeah. Nah, it ain't. We're gonna bring him in a little bit later. We're gonna talk about it a little okay. bit. All no, right, I right. we just met and what he's talking about. It ain't no it ain't no secret. Well, um, my I man mean, Dave Zito. We just met him. He's actually uh, the writer and producer of the of the Breaking series. Breaking. You remember Breaking from back in the day? Boogaloo Shrimp. You know, Boogaloo Shrimp. And uh, Shabadoo, yeah, man. And he was just out there telling us stories about the making that movie. So we're gonna have him on the show at a later date. But okay, definitely, definitely will be an interesting show. And he's an interesting character anyway. Definitely, just, and, and there's a new, new movie coming out too. Yeah, with, uh, uh, what's it called? The um, Boogaloo Kid. Boogaloo Kid. He has a new movie that he's um, what is it called? Kickstarter. Or K- yes, Kickstarter. Something, something like fun. that. Fun fundraiser, something. Kick, fundraiser. Fun kick starter. funder. <laughs> <laughs> However you get All the money. All that shit. Give me the money so I can make yeah. this movie starter. <laughs> Let me get some. So it's all good, but always. What's been up with you, man? I was chilling, man. My, um, my brother-in-law turned 40 this uh, past weekend. So my Fargo. Sister, yeah, my sister had a little party for him. And um, it was kind of like a family reunion. I had my boy, uh, Daniel, the guy, the guy that taught me how to DJ. Mm-hmm. He was there, and he used to DJ at the Century Club back in the day and Paradise 24, and, you know, so, you know, and, and my sister used to attend there, and all her friends were there that she used to go out with, hobnobbing into the club. So it was it was, it was was a big kind of family reunion type, type of deal, and we all had a good time, and... It was fun. Off the chain. Yeah. How was your weekend? It was, was all right. How was that cookie? <laughs> Cookie's great. <laughs> Cookie's fantastic. Right. But um, the weekend was cool. You know, I always got to start this time of year. My weekend uh, uh, revolves around football. Yes. And Niners, we got our ass whooped thoroughly. <laughs> and what made it worse is, you know, Laylaw, he's a super Steelers fan. Oh, and we had a bet. Man, no, really? And he came to the house and he was just talking shit the whole fucking game. I felt like. He was high and talking yeah, I shit. Felt, <laughs> I, I, I felt like grabbing my fly swatter. <laughs> right, just <laughs> smacking her every time. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I lost the bet. So, uh, Are you going to show the video? Do you, you want to show the video? I heard you. I thought I heard you there. And, of course, we have Tom Teasy in the building. I know you was on, Tom Teasy. I, I thought I was going to do a grand I, intro. It's, I, I, heard a, I heard a car door open, so I was like, what the? You, do you want to show the video, Tom? Yeah, show it. Can you? You got the video? I don't know how to do all that. I don't know how to do that. Oh, shit. Well, we might have to bring, bring it back and show the video. Next week. I like your hair. Uh-oh. Thanks. Where's the boy? Laying down, so let's hurry up. <laughs> 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 Wait, what, was, that, what was the bet? I, I had to, I had to, I had to wear a Steelers shirt and jump in the and pool, jump in the pool, fully clothed. Fully clothed. You took your phone out, right? Yeah, I took my phone okay, out. Good. Tanteezy made sure of that. I just took your phone out. But um, 
I uh I wasn't that new from the barbecue. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> I lost Different the bet. Shirt. <laughs> I did the bet. And it was cool. Something feels different. Why you you know music playing? Yeah. Yeah, I got music playing. It's got your beats playing. It's I good. can't hear it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, but that was my weekend. Um you got showing up at, at your own house at the game, for the game. And he was talking shit the entire time. Layla? And I had threatened to kick him and Hutch out the house. You can't. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, what, they, boy, that's what guys do. They talk shit. Well, it's friendly like competition. It. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know. Like it. Yeah. it was good, but shout out to Layla. Shout out to um, Big Hutch, Code 187. Sure. Got that new um, that new record. I think it's called The Godfather. Yeah, dope. Yeah, I've, I've heard some of it. Yeah, it's off the chain. That makes for, uh, and, um, I'm supposed to be on that thing, I believe. But um, Tom Tz, what about you? Anything interesting about your weekend? Um, I went to go see The Perfect Guy. Oh, how was it? You didn't tell me. Michael about the Ely and Sanai Lathan. Was it good? Yeah. It was good. I mean, it was predictable, but it was still good. So it was like what the what the commercial like about some dude yeah. who started stalking the breed. Yeah, it was, but they didn't show. They showed some really good um, previews, but they didn't show all the good stuff. So the previews didn't really dictate the movie. So it's a must see. I'll give it four out of five stars. So wow, like it's that? not okay. like I'm like like I have no intentions of going to see this movie. Right. So I don't care if you tell me did he did he get killed. Like, if anybody out there that want to see it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. I don't give a fuck, though, because I'm not going to see it. Me either, man. I, yeah, this, like, this did he, straight chick Like, flip. what I think is, this, now tell me if I'm right. It seemed like he was stalking her, like he started liking her or whatever. He didn't want to go away. And eventually, he gets in the house, and he starts he trying to kill more Chestnut. Is more Chestnut? Chestnut? Yeah, he's yeah, in it. Yeah. And that's the boyfriend. And then eventually, she kills him or something, right? Well, to me, it's... Is that it? Right. That's it. But then he <laughs> killed the neighbor. Damn. Damn. And the he knows actually it. didn't kill Morris in the house. He uh, he's gonna let it all out. He Go messed ahead. up his tires so he can spin off the road. And actually, he was still alive when he spinned off the road and he suffocated him. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but Sanai. So Mikey, he's a but, mother. But Sinai, skin niggas coming back, baby. <laughs> right? So, but Sanai killed him, right? Yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. So, she the only one that lived? Yep, she was. See, the only thing cat. about. Sanai only is thing on about, one right now. The only thing about movies, because you know, like most movies, the, the black people always die first. But right. when it's movies with all black people. <laughs> Black guy gotta die first. One black person gotta <laughs> live. <laughs> so, at least you're assured somebody black is gonna live in this movie. No, no, but the white lady died first, her neighbor. Ah! That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> That's right. Hey, back. Uh, that ain't right. That ain't right. <laughs> that is right. Okay. But I would definitely Reparations. See it. Damn it. I would definitely see it just to support, even if you rent it out of Redbox. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely. feel like it's, it's a, a few movies a like that. Buy. I directed it, too. I'm not sure if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's, a must, it's a must buy. A must buy? Yeah. I think she directed it, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, well, we'll rent it. You know. Gotta support. Gotta support. Gotta support. Gotta support. So, um, Tantizi. We got. Yes. You know I think what? we got less than, yeah. We do got less than, but I want I want to do the old school new news. But well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to do the old school new news at the top top of the segment. Can you, can you, you, got, you got a few minutes? Yeah, that's because we were talking. Sorry about that. Time's easy. Time? What happened? Yes. Okay, just make sure you ain't got to go nowhere. She like I was. I know. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with the old school new news right here on the Going Way Back Show. Money B. Money B. Yo, what's up? What's up? This is Too Short, and you're watching T Radio B. Yeah. <laughs> heard a lot of talk about me and my niggas. The outlaw worldwide, my figures. Triumph to tragedy to right back on top, and niggas still mad at me for pushing that big truck for 24. Square feet and ATL game lock, Joe. Now that's 
what my nigga got shot for. Being too motherfucking wrong for this fuckboy. See the darkness, see the light, he wanna kill it. Misery loves company, and that's the real shit. But in 2004. Hey, what's up? It's Tom Logan in the house, and you're tuned into T Radio V. Get my break on. Turn it up. Turn it up. Oh, shit. Cleaning. That's my birthday book a little. Oh, shit. Yeah. Going back to old money being in the building. Ready to print. What up, man? How you doing? Man, I appreciate you coming out, man. Hey, with the crew, with the crew. Oh, oh, now you break it. What's going on? I know, right? What you gotta do? <laughs> you want me to hold it? Hold, what? Time. I don't know what that is. You gotta speak into the mic, man. Old school new news? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Hey, Rap. We do uh, uh, one of our co hosts, Time Teasy. She's not here, but live via Scott, satellite. Okay. We do Scott. have the old school new news with Time Teasy. Hey. What up, Teasy? Hey, what's going on? It, it's the old school new news with Tan Teasy. Go for you it. You gotta cue me in. I can't see anything. Oh, go for oh, it, go sweetie. You're up. <laughs> and, look, and the boy is up. And so is he. Right. Go okay, ahead. so up first, we got Wiz Khalifa. Um, he went back to his old high school, Taylor Aldrich High School, and he gave away 17 hundred backpacks that were worth $45,000. Inside of the backpacks were school supplies as well. Nice. Uh, I think that's kind of steep. I mean, if he would have hired me, I probably would have used some coupons and maybe saved him some money. Because $45,000 for some backpacks. Mr. Fab, Mr. Fab does that in Oakland every year, too. But he yeah. has people donate. I mean, it's like 4,000 kids in the school, though. So yeah. that's, that's about nice. That's about right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, up next, we got Lil Wayne. Looks like someone is shopping a porn tape with him on it. Oh, um, it shows Lil Wayne on the tape in nothing but his socks and two women. But as we all know, he has to sign off on the tape before it's even released. So we'll see what happens with that. And this is according to TMZ. Young Moolah, baby. <laughs> you guys think uh, Birdman is shopping that tape? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> You're like, if I can't get that booty no more. All right. Oh. oh you stupid. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. So Daisy and Kanye West, niggas in Paris, has inspired a lady by the name of Bianca Boso to do a children's illustrated book where she took some of the lyrics out of out of the song and put them in a book. Friends in it's Paris. a really cute book. Too. <laughs> I didn't hear it. What happened? What y'all say? Friends in Paris. Friends in Paris. <laughs> I like that. Oh yeah, it is called Friends in Paris. Yeah, wow. it sure is. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. And up next, an associate of a former associate of Sir Mix a Lot named David Ford um, tried to sue sue Sir Mix a Lot. For royalties, you know how Nicki Minaj did Anaconda and used that sample. Well, he was trying to get some royalties from that. He said he didn't ha have any idea that he was not listed at, on the copyright. So my question is, if he would have been getting royalties prior to this sample coming out, he should have known that he wasn't listed if he wasn't getting royalties, right? True. Yeah. True. One like one it didn't take a two. rocket science. Oh, one and one makes two. So the judge ruled in mix a lot's favor and threw the case out of court. Wow. Okay, and Minister Louis Farrakhan says that Jay Z should keep his wife Beyonce in line. He said she needs Ooh. to be wearing more clothes. He also seems to believe that women tempt men to take their minds off of the Bible and the Quran when they disrobe themselves. What do you guys think about that? Wait, show that picture again? Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not... <laughs> so what if someone told, told you, Money B, that your wife needed to put some clothes on? What would you say to them? Talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't it like men want people to look and lust after their significant other anyway? You know, personally, Ty Teasy, I feel like if if... Men are 
looking at, at you in that way, then it's a compliment. You know what I mean? It's like, right. I don't want nobody that be, I don't want no woman that nobody want to look at. You feel me? True. So, and, and I'm not, and I'm not insecure about it. Like, like just cause you looking at you gonna run off with some dude, it's like. But ain't she in, a, she in entertainment though. So I mean, exactly. for her. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. part of her job that's is, part to, of her is job. to be provocative and yeah. to look and to look a certain way. So you can't. And, and, and she was already Beyonce before he got with her. So yeah. he can't say, okay, now you can't do that. Now she was a school right. teacher. That might be. You know. Yeah. Now you're yeah, right. Now if she's a school teacher. Say that. Say that. Yeah. Again. If she's a school teacher, that might be a little different. Yeah. Right. You know. Then you can't go to school. You know, you can't go to go teaching and. and well, you, well, you can. Super, a super mini. <laughs> oh, no. I see some of the teachers down in Atlanta. Mm, God, <laughs> I think Mr. Minister Farrakhan should basically stay in his lane and mind his business. Yeah, I don't well, think I don't think that's his place. He's, he's just preaching. Say. He's just preaching. I understand like, what he's right. saying. Yeah, like, you know, cover yourself. Different. But come on, man. He ain't doing nothing different than he was doing back And then. I bet you he's looking at them same damn pictures he that he's sure telling her to cover up on. Come into my room. Because how, he, okay, know, how he know she ain't got no clothes on? He's looking. <laughs> up, right. Why is he looking? How does he know? Exactly. Up next, we have Rick Ross. We all know that he is newly engaged to Laura Galore, who is yeah. an Instagram model. Yeah. 22 years old. And, and mm -hmm. her mother took to her Instagram page and left a comment basically saying mm -hmm. that she was happy for her. She's always been a big fan of Rick Ross since the ninth grade. Um, she can't wait to tell the engagement party, the bachelorette, bachelorette party and the wedding, and that her daughter is living a real life uh, fairy tale dream. So you all know that the trolls came out and left comments under her comment. Oh, shit. And one chick said, but he's still fucking my girlfriend from Philly, shaking my head, hashtag fat. Guard your heart, girl. So, Mama Galore responded back to the girl, and she said, he's a celebrity, of course. That's to be expected. Um, she said, you know, basically they knew what he was doing. Um, he said, as long as the homegirl is getting wet ass while my baby is getting diamonds, and his heart is treating her like a queen of his palace, who's winning, boo? She said, where's your wow. friend's diamonds at? And so this is a typical case when a thought breeds another thought. So right. that's my thoughts about that. And supposedly the ring that he bought was 300 and something thousand dollars. Like he spent 350 on the ring. Mm. You see that ring? I seen it. That shit was huge. It looked like her ass. Oh. <laughs> In them jeans. Huge and white. So 50 Cent did a event where a transgender woman wanted to take a picture with him. And, you know, of course, he took a picture with the lady. But Young Buck, as you can see, was not having it. So 50 Cent posted the picture on his Instagram page and said, why wouldn't I take this picture? I've taken pictures with Puffy, too. Laugh out loud. Oh. I like it. They have this rival going on, and it seems like 50 Cent is always winning because I've never seen Puffy reply back to any of his, yeah. you know, slanders. But well, he slandered the vodka at some point. Yeah, Ciroc. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, uh, Bow Wow's engagement to Erica Mena, who we all know is from the Love and Hip Hop series, um, mm -hmm. has called off their engagement. He feels that she's tell she tells too much of their personal business on social media because yep. last time she spoke on social media about their affair she mentioned that she had a miscarriage five months ago and basically he's fed up with her always seeking attention and has called off the engagement who didn't know that was gonna happen i knew i, I didn't think that was gonna last anyway i just think he's using this as an excuse to get out of the engagement anyway it was a bad move yeah i think it was so a bad too. move uh, uh, all together it was a bad move I didn't think they I don't think either one of them thought that that would that they would no she did I knew that could, she, she was trying she to was hold thinking. on tight yeah. oh you think so Arabian tell you hey what I you knew her. exactly her moves yeah oh so you, you think can see really, her move. you saw her moves from the show yeah so you think she really wanted to go through with it of course oh she was I gonna, thought she gonna used gonna that as a that pony she thought this was her meal ticket. I thought this. I thought it was a to the horse the Whoa. factory. <laughs> what was that? What was no, that? No, I thought that was her. I thought she was in my video or something. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Look like her, right? <laughs> Bringing her back. 
Bring her back. <laughs> so that's this week's old school new news on the Going Way Back show with my man Money B. And as always, you can catch me on all social media at T O N underscore T E E Z Y. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the like button, share with all your friends and show social media. <laughs> and that's that's it. I like you better without your hat. I like you. I like you better without your hat. Well, thank you, Tanti. We can see your face. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the love. All right, have a good show, guys. Uh, All right, thank you. And happy birthday, Money B. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Boogaloo, birthday Boogaloo. Birthday Boogaloo. (laughs) Birthday Boogaloo. Every time. Peace out. Uh, Word. So, Arabian Prince. Yes, sir. What up? What up? Now, obviously. The thing everybody, you know, want to get into about the whole, you know, being a founding member of NWA, mm-hmm. right? But I'm actually, you know, an old B-boy and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a hip-hop fan. So, you know, I had It Ain't Tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the single and, and, and Strange Life and everything. So, and what, what I understand is you kind of got kind of got into the business. Was it through Bobby Jim or what? Nah, well... You know, we was all DJs back in the day, and um, so you started out as a DJ. Yeah, started out as a DJ, and you know, rocking just, the neighborhood hey, parties, rocking the neighborhood parties, <laughs> had my own little club in Lennox yeah. called the Cave that everybody came through. Damn, yeah, man, back in the day, and um, the transition. I was telling somebody else this is crazy how all the West Coast DJs mm-hmm. kind of at the same time went, aha. Mm-hmm. Like we can make music, yes. you know, because we was playing. If rap had just kind of started, and they was right. doing it on the on the East Coast, and had a couple cats coming up on the West, you know, like they wasn't even really rap then. It was uh, what was uh, Cletus that rappers rap disco, all that yeah, stuff, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And we was like, man, we could do this. And I had a little uh, drum machine. My mom didn't give me enough money to buy an 808, so I got some Sonic drums, a little mm-hmm. Mattel yeah. toy. Yep. And I, in the club, man, I'd be DJing, and then I would stop the music and just play the drums, and people kept dancing. And I would just say stuff on top of the little drum beats, and I'm like, man, I can make a record. So I literally then went in the studio one day by myself, dude, not knowing nothing, like, I right, I'm going to make a record. And I made this record. So you just booked studio time? Booked studio time, went in, made a record, and um, then I went to the distributing company, the manufacturing company, McCola Records, because right. they was putting out all the stuff on the West. I walked in there, and Bobby Jimmy just happened to be there that day. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he, he was like, oh, let me hear that. And he heard it. He's like, I can put that on my label. I was going to do my own label, right. but he already had a label, and he had already, you know, Bobby Jimmer from K-Day. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 right. Exactly. I'm in. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, classic. Here, here I'm in. Yeah, he's like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. So Clearly that's how that started, cool. you know. And then, so that was, so did you work on, like, Roaches and all of those? I worked on, I did all the production on all the Bobby Jimmy Big stuff. Butt? Everything, yeah. Big Butt. Yeah, big we butt. like, I mean, we, well, we like ugly, you know what, uh, Egyptian butt. Lover did, we like ugly women. Okay, yeah. But everything after that, I did, um, mm-hmm. and you remember all the L.A. rapper, New York rapper, yeah. all of that stuff, yeah. And you produced all of that? Yeah. That's dope. Okay, so, uh, man, we're going to take a, we got we to gotta take a quick break, but I'm, I'm, Oh yeah, that's right. You gotta do Great. birthday, <laughs> the birthday boogaloo. I'm there. Everybody uh. gotta get into it. You know what I'm saying? But um, so you and you produced, so you produced that, but then you also produced um, JJ Fast Supersonic. Yep, JJ Fast Supersonic. You produced um, um, did you produce pa- Panic Zone? Yeah. And some of the dance too. Some of the dance too. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna when we come back, we're gonna talk about those records and. You know, because I want to know, did you get, did you get your, your, your dog? We can talk about that, too. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I think he really that. wants to talk for about that. For real, for real, for real. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back, man. It's the Arabian Prince in the building. It's going back show with Money B. Money B. Birthday Boogaloo. Yeah. Now, we were talking about, you know, your production. Right. And um, these records. Like, yeah. I know, you know, just from coming from that era, like a lot of times, especially coming into the business, you don't really know about your publishing and and, yeah, yeah. and all of your rights. Right. How did that work out? You know, from record to record, and more, more so, the uh, NWA stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why we kind of started NWA. You know, if you want to go back, because mm-hmm. you know Dre was doing the well, record. Take, take me yeah. back. How did NWA mm-hmm. start initially? All right, so I was doing all of the Bobby Jimmy and the Critter stuff, JJ Fad. Uh, I think I even did uh, what MC Smooth, mm-hmm. her wow. first album. Really? Yeah, Smooth and Legit did that. Um, 
Mistress and Madam E, a lot of other stuff. Wham, wow. T. Omar, that little nine year old kid, had that song, I'm Only Nine. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, dog. That Damn. was great. I just thought about that. Okay. But, um, and then Dre was doing all the record crew <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So and, um, we used to always hang out tight, you know. We would always talk about it, like, man. Now, are you are you wait are you from Compton? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did you know? Like, how did you guys knew each other just from the club scene. From the club scene and from touring together, you know, when we was doing all the old school electro funk stuff. Okay. We would always tour together, and then you know, when we wasn't touring, we was always just messing around with stuff, hanging out, DJing. Yeah, because I was DJing. Man. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we would talk about that, man. Like, you know, man, it kind of sucks that we producing all these hits. But we really ain't getting the big lion's share of the money. Like, you know, we didn't really know much about royalties and publishing mm -hmm. and writers back then. Cause we was young. Mm -hmm. And they banked on Right, that. right, right, right. And like, Dre had an RX-7 with no back window. You know, I had a uh, Mercury Capri. You know, like, bad breaks. You part of the Capri Club? Yeah, no, okay, I, I was. <laughs> you were? Dude, center lines, everything, oh, dude. Shit. Yeah, Uber. I had the, uh, the su <laughs> people don't know, the super wing on the, on yeah. the back? Yeah, yeah, the super wing? Oh, yeah. Somebody stole it, but you know, I had it for a minute. Yeah, the mirror, the yeah. wink mirror. Yep, I had the mirror. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so <laughs> we was talking about that, and that's how Easy got with, um, I mean, Dre got with Easy initially, because it was like, man, we need, we need to do something else. Mm. You know, like, how can we do something else that's us where we ain't working for somebody else and only getting paid money in the studio. But we was getting cash, but we was getting paid in the studio. We wouldn't really give royalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. get paid to do it. Right. And yeah. that was that. That was it. You didn't see nothing else. Right. So that's why the whole NWA thing came together. Okay, so like, what was it? Like, did Dre say a rap Easy said? Like, how did, how did it? Yeah, it was kind of like that. Like, hey man, you know, Easy homeboy over here the neighborhood pharmaceutical technician you know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he got a little got money dough. yeah he yeah, got yeah. a little dough like, let's, let's go he'll put it. some money in we do the beats and do the production and just make it happen and uh ren used to live around the corner from uh easy and then yellow was dre's boy from the wrecking crew uh -huh. and then cube lived down the street from uh dre's aunt because he was Across in CIA. Jinx. Yeah, he Jinx. was from Jinx. He was in CIA with Jinx at the time. So right. we was just messing around at first. It wasn't even NWA. It was just like, all right, let's do something. And then, um, you know, we just started putting it together. Did something for Easy, and then everybody else kind of came together and just NWA, you know. Yeah, because I know it earlier, like, you, Arabian Prince, Egyptian lover, I thought y'all was from Arabia and Egypt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I never knew. But then... Um, you know, then um, like NWA and the Posse. Yeah. Now, can we can we pull up the pictures? I know I know we have pictures. Uh, scroll through them. I want to show. Yeah. And also too, I want to uh, talk about that too. I always scroll. clear this up while yeah. you scroll. Scroll through and let's find the one, the actual. No, the album cover. The album no, cover. That yeah, one. Right yeah, there, yeah, right there, right there. Okay, now what's you going to? Now, you? now you see what that says? Do you see Posse on there? Yes. No, I mean, no, do you see Posse no, on there? No. There you go. The one I had did. Yeah, see, that's what I tell people. NWA and the Posse was a bootleg. Yeah. Macola Records wow. made that record after we left. That's really? why it had, like, Feel a Fresh crew on there and yeah. other stuff, because he was trying to take a, turn it into an album. That was an EP that right, we did. Yeah, yeah. the original yeah, EP. Yeah. So that's had, the original. Had L.A. is the place, Fat yeah. Girl. Uh, Panic Zone. It was Panic like five Show. songs. It was like five there. songs. Yeah. 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 And Posse now it had like 10 songs. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It was, right. Was, it was, on was there. A, That's right. It was an unauthorized bootleg. We didn't even authorize that. Really quick, I think we have a caller on the line. Let's see. Caller, you there? Yes, sir. Who's calling? Where you calling from? I am calling from Los Angeles to speak to the illustrious Arabian Prince. Word. Who is this? I think I know who this, this is. This is the unknown D. Yes, sir. <laughs> he comes out of hiding. <laughs> what up, unknown? Hey, man. Hey, let me, tell you, unknown. let me tell you about the unknown DJ, man. I've been trying to get this fool to do an interview okay. to show his face for 30 years. He won't do it, man. I know. Why you ain't coming out, man? What's going on? You don't want to come on the show? Hey, man. I Hey, I don't, I don't do such things. But Arabian Prince, uh, you know what? Somebody with a, with, with the movie out there and everything, and you know, with my man, um, just the resurgence of all interest in West Coast 
you know, of that era, I, I, I would be remiss in my duties as um, one of the old timers out here if I didn't have something to say about Arabian Prince. You know what I mean? Man, most definitely. And, and I actually got a, a, a story about you. You probably don't even know. I, I, I was actually in your studio or you, you had you had you had a studio in your crib, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, many decades ago. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what part because you you weren't you then you do um, CMW stuff initially. Yes, sir. So I remember yes, one time um, I was with Rose from Body and Soul, and oh, she, she Rose was the body of Body and Soul. Ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no disrespect, D. No disrespect. No, nah, it's all good. But but you know it was it was me. Rose and Sin Dog from Cypress Hill, like I told you, yeah. Sin so Dog, and she was like, no "Yo, shit. she was like, yo, let's let's stop by um, the homie unknown, whatever." We came by, and and you didn't know we were just coming out, so I was kind of like sitting in the corner, and then it was like, "Yeah, yeah, uh, they got this is new group, um, CMW, uh, Compton's Most Wanted. They're recording, they're recording down there." And you came up, you're like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm recording these dudes." Blah blah blah. And then I think eight might have came upstairs. He had the Jerry Curl and everything, and he was like, <laughs> "Yo, what's up?" And then I was like, "Compton's most wanted." I was like, <laughs> "I was like, okay, cool." So <laughs> I just remember leaving your crib, and obviously you didn't, you, we, because we, I don't, I don't think we were ever formally introduced to anything. I just knew I was at your crib, and they was down there recording it. But then, like months later, CMW came out, yeah. and I was like. Those was them dudes. Yeah. I was like, they really came out. You know what? Yeah. You know what? That was probably that was probably um, Alonzo's crib over in L.A. because we recorded a lot of um, stuff back in. Probably. Um, uh, a lot of uh, well, you'll find out in Lonzo's book that's coming out. But he bought a uh, crib from a, a very famous um, blues and R&B singer in L.A. Not to expose where my man lives and stuff, but and it had a studio, and he converted it into a you know a you know much more modern studio. And you know, Lonzo and I run together for more years than I will admit. So that's probably where you bumped into there. And Rose actually lived at um, lived at the crib with Lonz for uh, for a minute while they were putting together their albums and stuff. And she, and that's probably you why know, she was Rose, so was like, Rose was like family, you know, both yeah. Rose, Rose and Dee are like, uh, are like family. I can't believe that Jeff, Jeff wasn't there because Jeff was the man. You no, know? Jeff was my guy, but Jeff, we Jeff just happened to be rolling with, with, with Rose that day, me and Sendog and she brought us over there. So that's how I say, so you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> that was with Rose. She yeah, really, that's real talk, she, man. She that's real that. talk. How did, how did you get Arabian? That's, a, that's what I, I this this man is so busy. Hey, I'm, I'm looking to call him because he's a fly guy. They gave me a free round of golf. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the things we do to get the legends on the show, man. <laughs> Got so you. I wanted to ask Arabian a question, though, man. I, I, I thought about this a while back. What do you think would have happened in L.A. if there was no Macola? Do you think, like, you know, I often wonder if, um, you know, somebody would have stepped up to create their own. I mean, we did as a what years after we were with. You know, after we were with McCola, we created West Coast Record Distributors. But I often wonder, you know, there's certain points in time where people, you know, things just happened and they lead to other things happening. But I wonder what he thinks. Like, where where would people, where would Rudy have gone? Where would Egypt have gone? Where would Hammer's first stuff have came out? Where would the X-Men and Unknown and Ice-T and Arabian Prince and um, Bobby Jimmy and the Critters and, you know, like I'm saying, uh, you know, Dream Team in the House, all of this great stuff. Where would that, I wonder where it would have went. Man, I think, you know what's funny? If, you buy? Yeah, if, yeah, yeah, you know what's funny? If, if there was nothing on the West Coast doing that, man, I think the DJ scene probably would have rocked a couple more years. Yep. You know what I mean? Because it was so much money in DJing. And the only reason people pulled the trigger on making records because it was easy. It was like, oh, there's a spot over here in, in Hollywood that we can get records pressed. Right. But if it wasn't that, I think people probably would have 
kept DJing and then eventually ended up on some majors here and there, and that probably would have killed it. Well, <laughs> you know? I, th I think to add on to that, um, my whole thing with 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 everything, I believe if if it wasn't McCola, it would have been somebody it been else. Somebody else, yeah. Somebody would have thought of it. It would just been a new, a different name. Yeah. And it may have been a few months later. Yeah. Or a year later, but somebody would somebody would have figured it somebody, out. Because you got to think of. Every time we have an idea, we're not the only person that right. has that idea. You know, it's just usually it's the person that's that shows initiative is the first person to go go out and do it. Or if you do it when you think of it. You know what, though? Yeah. You know what? No, it's funny that you should say that when you think of it, because we are a very um, Xerox society. When Don started pressing records on the West Coast, there was Rainbow. There was... Um, um, there was other people, there was JDC, there was, um, but not in the game l like that. I mean, there were other places to get records pressed, but you would think that there would have been four more, like, okay, we're going to, I mean, we were doing that. We were grabbing acts and stuff like that, but it's kind of like no, nothing came out. I, I also wonder just how, how just what a linchpin McCola was for all of that although you know a lot of a lot of crazy things went on at McCola yeah, we won't go in yeah I mean shit, everybody everybody had their their McCola you know everybody had a story cause I, 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 I Digital Underground our first record was distributed through McCola yeah actually TNT Records um, Underwater Rhymes and Life's Cartoon oh yeah was through McCola Ooh, underwater rhymes That's oh right. yeah you know and, and obviously <laughs> that, was, it came that was that was good man from being being um, the connection because H and Gregory was yeah. role managing with, with you guys, you know, over Rufus and WA and whatnot. So I, I'm pretty sure that was the connect. But right. Ocola was the epicenter of everything coming out the West yeah. at the time. So I, I just feel like um, if it wasn't them, it would have been somebody else. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. What you think, I know? I don't know. It's, it's, I, I wish I wish somebody like one of one of us. You know, we had a uh, we um, Rudy and Rudy from the Dream Team, Egyptian Lover, Lonzo, and myself. We had come together to form West Coast Record Distributors at one time, and you know, I think we could have we could have been that force had not um, the G you word. Know, <laughs> you know, when you try to put when. When you when you get uh, too many too many strong willed people, mm, nah, I'll just leave it at that. Too many strong willed people, you know, that are used. You get a whole bunch of independent people that are really used to running things themselves. I, I would have liked to have thought that somebody from the coast could have arisen to, you know, to do that. Had you know, if Ice Cube had a, had a mind to build a distributor or something, if he, you know, he's very, a very artist, you know, focused person. And now look at him, he's like an entertainment mogul, right? If he would have been on that in the beginning, I would like to think that somebody from out here would have, you know, been that per would have been that person. I mean, you know, at a, at a certain point, Dre with Death Row had that, you know, had that thought and everything, but I wish it could have been younger. Some Barry Gordy out on the West Coast could have really, you know, expanded, but it's a it's a rough game, record game, rough game. Yeah, it is, and, and, and it's all about, it's a learning experience, you know, as we grow, as we we, we grow within the industry that we're in, we, we always learn. Right. And then, you know, people, it, it, it took Ice Cube to go through that to know that he could do that. Yeah. Just like it took, you know, you from starting out as a DJ spinning those records and they're like, I can make these records. Right. So I know we're getting close to when we got to break out and so it's, it's one or two questions that I want to ask you to make sure that I get in. Um, can you put that NWA record back up? Because I've never known, I, I want you to name every person in this thing and I, I'm going to tell you who I know. I see Candyman. Yep. I see Ren, I see Easy, I see Dre, I see Cube, I see you, I see Train up there. Yep, and Jinx is behind the A. Is that Jinx? Yes, yeah, Jinx behind see, the I, A. That's what I didn't know. Now, yeah. who is that down there? I don't have a clue. Right, with a glass of wait. <laughs> I no, don't the, the little light-skinned dude over there. That's probably Yellow. And then who's is the other dude? Who is that? Crazy yeah, that's Crazy D with the hat on, right? Yeah, with the hat on. Crazy D with the hat. Yeah, the other two I don't know. And then who is the dude looking like Layla over there? 
with the wife. Hey, yeah, I don't know. Layla. That, that, <laughs> I, I, I could have sworn that was Layla. I think that is Layla. That he just ain't telling nobody. Been before he, yeah. you, know. you know what? That might have been Layla. Yeah. Fuck it. That's Layla. Back, yeah. back when Layla was skinny. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Everybody had this skinny. Back when Layla was skinny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Layla. Oh, hey. yeah, he wasn't eating them pudding hey, pops. I saw Layla. I saw Layla. Hey, 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 he, he looking good. Law, Law, know I'm just messing with him. Law, Law's kind of uh, working on the project he told me about that's supposed to be like. Hey, I know. Uh, Law, really Law, nice, Law so. look here. Law don't work out. You ain't got to code it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, that wasn't me, Law. That I see him me. all the time. He ain't working out. So, <laughs> real quick, now, um. You know, back on the back on the um, the whole with the NWA thing. Right. At what point did like how did you guys separate way? You know, like go separate ways. Yeah. Like, what was it like? Did you say like, wait a minute, man, I'm only on one record? Because when y'all made the record, right. How is it that you were only on one record? Like it's, it's almost like you was a, a DH, like a specialist. Well, no, like, when I we was, make these dance records. Well, no, you know what it is. It was. When we did the did the thing, me and Dre was like the producer. So we was I was more in the production. Like I, I really didn't care about the fame side of thing. I yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. make music and make money. Right. So when we did the original deal, it was like, hey, this is gonna be our record label. You know, we're gonna share in Ruthless Records equally. It wasn't so, like yeah, Easy's so it label. Was, yeah. It wasn't Dre's label. So it didn't matter if he was on this record yeah, or yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's record. why I don't know if you noticed the original version of uh Supersonic was put out on Dream Team Records. Oh. I did that record, you know, by myself, and I put it out on Dream Team Records. But uh, Rudy, you know, forgot to pay me here and there, so I was like, mm. all right, you know, I need to get this back. And we were just starting Ruthless Records, so I told Easy, I'm like, look, I'm gonna bring this back over here. It's already a hit. Let's put this out on Ruthless. So you found them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you find them? I was dating one of the girls, and Dre was dating one of the other girls. In the oh, room. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so, how'd you? But they was from Rialto. Yeah, and they weren't rappers. They just. We was in the studio when they messed around, and they was like, oh, we want to rap. And I'm like, y'all can't rap, but let, let's do something. I got some studio time. Let's yeah. mess around. And we came up with a blush So which one was you dating? I was dating Juana, and then uh, Dre was dating this girl named Annie, because originally there was five girls. Uh -huh. it, JJ Fad stood for um, Juana, Juanita, Fatima, Annie, and Dania. That's what it stood for. Okay. And then when um, we brought it over to Ruthless, because some of the girls had some falling out, so they got rid of three and added one. So now there's only three girls. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I put it on Ruthless, man, and, you know, with the intent that this is our new label, let this blow up. It was the first gold and platinum thing on Ruthless, even right. before NWA. Yeah, and then when I found out that, you know, later on, the same thing was happening, like, oh, I, I ain't getting my paper on this either over here, and I brought this over here for us. Yeah, to go and do it. And then on the NWA stuff, oh, I, you know. And Dre was your guy, like, how you, how you yeah, yeah. How you gonna let But it wasn't even Dre, you know, Dre wasn't getting his either. Like, you know, you saw in the movie when nobody yeah. really getting their money like they were supposed to, so I was like, man, you know, hey, Jerry, what's up with the money? Oh, talk to Easy. Easy, mm -hmm. what's up with the money? You know, Jerry's a manager, talk to him. I can I see some royalties. We would never see the royalty statements. We would never see the deposits from all the shows. We would only get the money on the road. We would never get the money, the deposit. And that's yeah. a lot of money. That's half the money. Yeah, right. Pretty much. So after a while, man, I'm like, you know what? Shark Tank. Right. I'm out. So yeah. you just spun out the same way that, yeah, they, you know, just said like, hey, man, yeah, I'm out. I can't you deal with it. So it had nothing before, to do with yeah. the creative. No, no, no. Was I was still cool with everybody, and I wouldn't have my little meeting with Jerry behind closed doors, and we straightened it all out, and, and I bounced. Every, and then everybody else was cool. They was like, yeah, we feel you. Yeah, and then and you Cube, went, you know, had, I went back to one of the, took, uh, took footnote. <laughs> hey, I went to one of the concerts later on in a brand new Porsche, and Cube was like, where, where, where'd you get that from? Yeah. And I'm like. I'm, yeah, I had to do I, I do my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's dope. So you never. So it was never really like because even Ren says like, "Hey, rap, we always everybody's always cool." Yeah, I ain't never had it a problem. Was, I was the only one. I never really had to be for nobody because I actually went back later on and produced part of the second um, JJ Fad album after all that left. That's yeah, because was actually in. On yeah, the, yeah. In after the I video. left, so it was kind of like I knew what I was dealing with going back, dealing with Jerry Heller. So okay. I went back with my attorneys and got it done right. So one last question. <clears throat> um, were you expecting not to be a part of the movie? Or do you feel like you should have, like they should have at least mentioned, like at least said your yeah. name? Well, I have a theory, and I've often said this. Yeah. I think the reason that I was left out the movie 
was because I had to sue Ruthless Records later on, and you know Tamika Easy's wife owns a label, and I had some issues with some you know royalties and some publishing stuff, and I had to sue, and I got paid. So I think that the reason I was left out was because of her, because she's the executive producer of the movie, uh-huh. her movie. You know, ultimately it's her film. So I think I was left out because of that, and J.J. Fad was left out too. Mm-hmm. So both of us was left out. So that's what made me go, ah, it wasn't just a, you know, more thought. It was a little yeah. bit more of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like my thought too, because like you said, it, it was her movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, one thing, and I know we got to, I know we got to leave, but I just want to hear your thoughts on this because it's something that came to mind when I watched the movie. Yeah. One thing that jumped out at me was when the scene in the movie when it was like. They made it seem like Easy was downsizing, and he, yeah, nah, it's like nah. Easy never downsized. Nah, Easy had paper. He did. So yeah. why do you think? Why do you think that they let that out there? Especially a, if if Tamika, she's you know she gets the last say on it. Yeah, yeah. Why would she allow that to be? Because she got the last say on it. But what I'm saying, why why would she allow that to say like like he's downsizing and he's not making? Because it doesn't money. make him look bad. Huh? It doesn't make him look bad. Downside. If you say somebody's downsizing, versus well, it didn't make him look that, good versus, to say like, yeah. oh, like, like but he, like he's going broke. Really happened? Yeah. Because he wasn't going broke. No. Nah, but, but, but versus well, what ma- really happened? Yeah. Well, there was a lot of stuff in that movie that was. So yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was a great film. I liked the movie. Oh, I the movie was dope. I seen the movie twice. Yeah, the movie was you know, dope. It, but there was a lot of things that changed in that movie that weren't. The yeah, obviously. Story. Like you, know, you said, that's you how they do in a movie. You can't let a. You know. Can't let the truth get in the way of a But my whole thing for me, you know, I would never bitter. People was thinking, oh, why are you bitter? Why are you speaking? I said, people ask me questions. I'm just going to answer the question. Yeah. I didn't right. care. I was cool yeah. with it. And I understood why I was left out. But if they was going to leave me out the movie, don't leave me out of scenes that I was there in real life, though. Like, if I was looking at the movie, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait I was there. I was, there. there. <laughs> I, I was probably in I the was bathroom. Part of that conversation. I was probably in the bathroom <laughs> when we was at the skate rink. Oh, I was probably in the bathroom when we was on the show in a concert or at the oh, hotel. Because you was, at, you was actually, I was actually there, there yeah. but they just kind of left me That's out. That's how I so. feel. They left me out at the, uh, the music <laughs> seminar. Exactly. I, I yeah, like you was there. So real quick, tell the people, you know, what are you up to? And then how can they find you on social media? You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, social media. Let's do social media first. It's, um, I got a OG Arabian Prince on Instagram and Twitter. Right. And then uh, my Facebook is Mick Lazan, M-I-K. L E Z A N. That's the top secret name. I use. Right. You know. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to listen to this back and find you. And um, as far as um, what I'm up to now, man, I'm, I've been in tech for like ever, man. I had a special effects company, video game company for years, oh, nice. for last twenty some years, and now I'm, I'm messing around with all this virtual reality stuff, man. That's the Sweet. new hotness right now. The oh, goggles really? and all that. I should have brought them, but yeah. Dude. What the four D? Like this? It's, it's the real yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's you, the real yeah, sex yeah. packets, yeah. man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm in that. Yeah, because I know every time I reach out, you're like, oh man, I gotta go. I'm, I'm out of here. This thing. Yeah, I'm doing this. Yeah. I gotta leave town. I'm looking at this virtual like, titties. You know, it's hey, they, they got that too. <laughs> hey, it's crazy. He's developing the real sex pack. Hey. Basically, man, it's crazy. Dog. That's what it is. Dog. Baby Prince, I appreciate yes, you taking sir. the time, man. Thanks for having me. Happy birthday, sir. Oh man, hey, wait hey, man, one more time. Birthday boogaloo. Birthday boogaloo. Hey, this man a drink. <laughs> birthday boogaloo. Anyways, always let them know. Always in your ear on Twitter or always on Instagram. Check us out. Um, I have to mix down every Friday on Sirius XM. Twelve noon. Channel 96, Foxhole. All right, catch me on all social media, at MoneyB69. Make sure you like MoneyB's fan page on Facebook. Subscribe to the Going Way Back Show YouTube channel. And for everything classic hip hop on uncut, check out GoingWayBackShow.com. I appreciate the guests. Yes, sir. Anytime. Coming through. And, you know, we're going we gonna to get it in and do what we do. He'll have to take, take me out and teach me how to play golf a little bit. There you go. <laughs> there it is. And um, we out, man. We'll be back next week. Next week, we got Dustin Felder, who is actually the, the acting coach for most of the actors on the on Straight Outta Compton. Oh, really? But nice. he's, a, he's an acting coach to Will Smith and and his kids. Okay. And he, he's done a lot of shit, and he's actually my first cousin. Uh-huh. Ah. Anyway, but we'll be back next week. Same back time, same back channel. And until next time, people, please be, be easy. easy. Yeah. It's the Gone Way Back Show with Money B. Classic hip-hop, raw and uncut. Thanks for visiting the Gone Way Back Show channel. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe, and click that like button.